Taft Air Portugal demonstration delivery. Can you see through the fence? You can see it there. If you're pretty neon. Oh my, look at that. It's all plugged up. The holes are plugged up for the night. We got storms that are imminent here on this Friday, 6th of July. I'm going to force you to look through barbed wire and chain link for the duration of this adventure, so I encourage you to get used to it. Mr. Tom Patterson is inside this aircraft. Fortunately, chain link prevents me from really zooming in on the cockpit, but you can see there. Look at this, they gave it the mask. I need to mention that. I need to mention all of my first impressions. Shut up with my tangents, first impressions. Look, it's got the mask, the black under eye. Tom is mainstream media, ladies and gentlemen. Mainstream media is granted access to the inner workings of Neo. Hopefully, my friendship with our buddy in the drive-bys will get me on board. Well, I don't want to penetrate the chain link, given what happened here about a week ago with the partially nude individual who ran across the taxiways. I'm sure you all saw and heard about it. I think they're a little sensitive about the fences now. So I will keep my distance. Lightning strokes are visible here. I am now the, oh, Joe is coming to get you. Okay, I need to go get Joe. Pizza What's roll. the name of the company? Recaro. Recaro? Yeah. Cool. It's headquartered in Germany. We've got a facility in Texas. So are you based in Germany? I'm based in Texas. What part? Ah, DF Dubs, I love it. DF Dubs. Love it, Call man. DF Whoa. Hello. Hey. Hi. This is uh, CL6710. This is our business message. There are 34 of them on this aircraft. And then they took us some of the seats here to do a lot of testing. Whoa, cool. Can you explain all of this stuff in detail? Yeah, absolutely. Every single piece. Every single wire, I want to know. That's awesome, man. That one, the plane's going to explode. <laughs> That's, That's the kill switch. Nice, man. Yeah. So, what, any difference in the color of the seat back? Or the oh, uh, yeah. So, the difference is those are Echo Plus and these are Echo. So, it's the seat pitch. So, you get three extra inches here. It's 34 inches versus 31 inches. Whoa. Like the same seat width. Holy crap. Same monitor. Can I do it? Can I sit for a second? Look yeah. out the window. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I hope the thunderstorm comes. I want to be stuck in this thing. Oh, yeah? That would be a dream to me. The seat's more comfortable than my bed. I wish I could be too. Dude, yeah. totally. Hi. Are these group over here? Ah, there he is. Might be doing an interview. Remember the mainstream media, you gotta watch out for them. Never trust him. He's the drive bys. Like, who travels with this thing? Uh, this guy can tell you all that. He's with uh, Tap. Okay. Hi. Oh, Wes, that's you. I don't have an inside voice. Sometimes I have a hard time. Yeah, I get in. Let's, let's keep wandering. Oh wow! Hang on. I haven't even noticed the what, this thing. Give oh, me the. the so okay. This is a little bit different. Have you ever seen the tray tables? It's got the latch that you yeah. turn this way. Just so this is actually mirrored after the cabin last year. Oh neat! It does that because a lot of times when you have something in your hands and you're trying to get the tray table, yeah. it's awkward. It's yeah. Weird. So this is supposed to be like a simple one-way thing. So a lot of times people talk about comfort and like, what does comfort mean? It means little things. Like we can yeah, explain dude. this, but until you sit down in the seat and use it, you never uh, like really understand it. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to sit in it for a long time. They should put somebody in the seat for 10 hours, just hire that guy <laughs> and just see how he like deals with it. Like yeah. hook him up with a bunch of psychiatrists. The testing we do on these is insane. Oh, I know on the, on the seats and stuff yeah. like that. Absolutely. Oh, you're just talking about a person that's in it. Oh, yeah, you have to like just human test it. See how long pitch. until they snap? The you want a seat that is almost like a sedative. Yeah, exactly. This is awesome, man. Assassin's Creed is something like a game. Oh, wow. What is that? Oh, is that actually Xbox working? Whoa, no, -uh. Xbox, you no, kidding me? I thought me? it was. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's the next Dude, that, I would, feature. dude, take that yeah, idea that. and run with it. Member of mainstream media doing an interview. I have to be quiet. Wow.
I hope I'm not shooting at a bad spot. I don't want to be right in Tom's line of sight. Maybe I should move. Oh, wow. Lightning. Something called lightning bolt right there. There she is. Edwin? Oh, this is so cool. I'm trying my best to be on my best behavior. Joe is doing his job somewhere. I'm just gonna sit here right right here in front of the, the jump seat. Just over there. My Neo liaison. Creator of seats. Wonderful, comfortable seats if I do say so myself. Let's go back in this bath boy. Yeah, that's nice for mom. I know. But they maybe have a different one. Yeah. Do they have a spot? They have Ooh, a big shower. I think they might have a scab maybe different than ours. Did you have a card? Oh, with their business cards. There's still no air vent, see? Hello! How are you? Yeah. Alright, no air vents. Notice no air vents. Nobody else is as alarmed as I am about the air vents. Air bus, come on, baby. We live here in down in Dixie. I'm still sweating. You could provide me with air vents, Neo. It's a big thunderstorm. Oh, you saw that. How you doing, Matt? Hi, I'm Matt. Nice hey, to meet Jamie you. Jamie from Airbus. Jamie from Airbus. Nice yeah. to meet you. Like you guys need some air vents. It, I'm just teasing you. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, actually, it is getting a little stuff. So having the, the door open all day, we're sort of constantly fighting, you know, to uh, to chase out the heat. Yeah. It seemed cooler, though, up in business class, I thought, than it is back here. Well, there's different temperature zones also, so I haven't checked how they have to Cool. That's true, too. Do the flight attendants have control of the temperature zones? Sweet. It's sweet because in previous airplanes, the cockpit had to do it. Oh, that's so not had, a task they, they had, want to deal with. They had to be calling the cockpit saying, passenger <laughs> in 70B is cold, while passenger in 50. It's like me arguing with my wife over the thermostat. Yeah. That's so not... now at least there's different temperature zones and you get to modify it. That's pretty cool. That's way cool. Yeah. With the compartment, there's a possibility to have one outdoor one. And then this being only carrying for rest. But now we've come up with a more efficient design where it's a combined solution. So when we go down there, you'll see a cabin crew rest and a flight crew rest, all of it together, separated by a partition. So you still have two separate spaces in there, but it's more efficient because we're not consuming revenue space, we're mm. only consuming carbon space. Okay. So then what that means is that they are gaining galleys at door one because we do no longer need to have the flight crew rest at door one. Yeah. Has it always been that way? Have, have uh, the crew rest areas always been down in the cargo bay, or did, no. is that more of a new thing? No, that... necessarily. On the A350, for instance, it's on the, uh, on the ceiling. Oh, is it? Yeah. Cool! I think I would okay. like the ceiling better. They actually okay, have to so hang you can go up. Like I would suggest that you go backwards. <laughs> okay. Backwards, that's the safety position. Do you want to go? Yes! This is, this is crazy. I'm going to film you going down the stairs, Tom. Take it easy, Tom. Oh, this is cool. My god. Tom, this is the best thing ever. Oh my god, I could live here. I could live here. Okay, so I should lay maybe that. So there's a step here so that you can go. Wait, there's a whole other one down here? Yeah. Whoa. So what this is. Cool. So the configuration that we have here, it's uh, what we call five plus one. So there's five bunks for cabin crew and there's one bunk for flight crew. If you see the, uh, the area where he is, there's a door here so we can close oh, it. Neat. And then this is a flight crew rest. Cool. So this area where we are here, it occupies a space of, um, of a cargo pallet. And it's an entire- This is a cargo pallet? Yeah. And it's, That's uh, awesome. It's an entire customizable um, area. So what this means is that airlines can decide how many cabin crew beds and how many flight crew beds want. So this is what we call a five plus one configuration. Delta, for instance, will have a six plus two. So that means that they will have six cabin crew and two flight crew. Does Boeing or any of the other uh, competitors have the same setup? Not or? As, so not as mobile as ours. Nice. Well, ours, it's really aligned with a cargo pilot and it's in an overnight that you get to change everything. Cool. 
it's it's pretty good. Do you want to come back here? Yeah, I do. Have you ever slept in one of these? Yes. Really? Is it is it I nice? Mean, not a, I mean, I'm not a cabin crew, but I've when I used to work in Toulouse, we, we were doing on a wood proving flight with those, so we could. Cool. To, uh, if you want to lay down. Okay. Oh, this is fantastic. This is not uncomfortable at all. This is so cool. Did you know that you had that? Do you want me to close in? Here, look. Yeah, close. <laughs> oh my God. Good night. If you could leave me here, I would be a stowaway gladly on board this thing. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, I want a business card. Sweet. Oh, wait, is that mine? Yes. So I saw another one here that wasn't on mine. So I hang on a second. Well, my name is Matt Cochran. We do the official handshake. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Say, right? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Are they showing off the cockpit at all? Yeah, let's go see. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. How's that thunderstorm doing? Oh, wow. And uh, when they get it back, so it's their cabin, it's the full design for, yes. for cup. We just remove oh, the yeah. engines and they get brand new engines for their entry into service. And we use this engine on our next prototype, the 330800, which is the smaller one, and do the test with this engine for the certification of the 330800. And how long have you been flying for Airbus? Four and a half years. I was the military test pilot for the A400M. Oh, and cool! Pilot, so mm -hmm. I did all the civil and military certification A400. That's fantastic. Awesome. From there I came to Toulouse in 2009, yes. worked with Airbus on the other side, and since they asked me if I want to join in 2014, and beginning 2014 I joined Airbus. I'm assuming that you flew the regular A330 before you flew this one, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, how is it compared? Are they the same certification? Is it like you could fly both of them the uh, same yeah, type? It's, it's the same type rating. Nice. There's no difference. We improved the handling qualities, but not, not as such that you are surprised or you cannot fly it. We just improved it to make it more pleasant, more reactive in landing, to, to remove the small deficiencies we feel now compared to the 30 years old certification. It was a different time. And, uh, and for example, what we have Whoa. to show, uh, according to FAA rules, we have to be able to land max takeoff weight in any condition which required immediate landing. This was not the case 30 years ago. Oh, really? So we had to do a lot of additional uh, failure analysis, which would be the limiting cases for that. And it would be, for example, a double hydraulic failure where you're limited on flaps <laughs> because you cannot use all the flap settings. And then we had to prove that it works and therefore we had to work a little bit on the flight controls. And how do the two planes compare, the regular A330 and the A330neo? How do they compare when it comes to flying? Well, the 330 is a very slick aircraft. It's a glider aircraft, which yeah, was designed is. for performance yeah. in cruise. It decelerates not very well, we know, but we can live with it. And the 330 improves the handling quality, especially in the landing, to give you more authority to quicker correct your flight path. It was yeah. and the Neo, yeah. and, uh, and uh, what you have usually when you use a little bit rudder in crosswind landing, you have an immediate roll. Yeah. And we get rid of this, so if you kick off the drift in a crosswind landing, you can concentrate just counteracting the, the, the crosswind yeah. components in the gusts, yeah. and it makes it much easier to land. So we were able to retune the flight controls to improve it, but not to change it to make it not comparable. So it's just more That's pleasant incredible. to fly, but it's still a 330. You need about three seconds from idle to, to max uh, cruise power, and here it's about four and a half seconds. So it's at the end it's not significant, but if you if you want it and you look at it, oh, what does it doing? Because the first part is just low, and yeah. then it comes. Yeah. And then it's a significant thrust. So this is really not a big difference. Thomas, um, do you spell your first name T H O M A S? Yes. And how do I spell your last name? Well, I give you. A card uh, I want a business card too. <laughs> That's I want fun. your business card too. Thank you, sir. That's why we have that. So sweet, right, Thomas. Yeah. I really appreciate it. If you have any question, don't hesitate to email. And, uh, I will send you a flood of take email. A picture of you, Matt. <laughs> okay. Will you take picture of me and then, and then text yes, it to me? Sorry. I got to justify to my boss why I left early. Can I sit there? Of course. Is it time to find? Oh my goodness! Did you yeah. see that? Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a huge weather fan in addition to aviation. Yes, I like the buff yeah, ones, so. Some of the storms. Oh storm my god. Thank you for oh my god. Did you What's see that? Good luck. Can I live here, Thomas? Huh? Can I live here? Are you there? Why not? Can I just move into the Neo? This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible.
It's a nice office, huh? Yes, it is. How many uh, total flight hours do you have? About 5,000. 5,000? You were mentioning chase planes uh, flying around Toulouse. What kind of chase planes do you uh, have? They have a Falcon cool. 50, what they use. The Tri-Hauler? Yeah, they have. Nice. They, they had a Corvette before, but uh, it was too expensive. A Javelin Comet? Or I'm sorry. Corvette. Oh, Corvette. okay. Which, uh, which was too expensive to maintain, and we use it for first flight or for very critical flight test. We have a chase airplane for takeoff. Yeah. After one flight level 100, then it comes back, and when we come back for landing, it's shown to them 100, and so we have something going on all the time. Cool. If we have something to visit outside, for example, if we have gear problems, you need yeah. somebody. Yeah, you need visual and reference. It you can see your very nice pictures. Because this plane is equipped with yeah. cameras in the plane, which are fixed, and so they know exactly where to go in the position. So the oh, wow. Usually we do our test and they get 15 minutes where they just maneuver around our test airplane and they tell us exactly now to the left go like that and then they do it and if you see the pictures it's amazing. I bet. Just uh, that is so cool. Video and pictures. That is so cool. To, uh, cut this short, but oh, I'm sorry. The, the big metal stairs and the lightning. Yeah. So we're trying to get people off Clear the, the ramp. The wow. What a neo. Joe, oh, what a Neo! This is awesome!